I begin going going towards uh, home, or towards the tavern, or yeah. There, there is a random drunkard laying in the middle of the street. There is. Yes, outside the tavern. All right. I mean, he can lay there. He's just laying face first in the ground with a bottle of whiskey. Does little Rawl know him? He's some man who's almost always drunk. Well, nothing out of the usual then. So he's normally actually in the bar, not on the road, but oh well. I'll go take a look at him. Does he seem to be okay? <laughs> yeah, he, he has like a few scuff marks where he probably like slid across the dirt. He looks, you know, he's fine. Hmm. All right. Went to the bar. You see Raphael in the bar. Second says, I think someone fell out of the bar. Yes, I uh, I threw him out. That's right then. I've spoken to a few. Have the others been here? She said, I have not seen the others for most of the day. I have also spoken to, well, the loyalists, um, the uh, <laughs> the um, local mob boss, as it were, and uh, tried to reach uh, my friend in the uh, uh, in the yard, but he was not at home. Yeah. I have suggested a meeting of the minds tonight at uh, Zoe's house to plan and strategize and talk a bit, see what we can figure out. See if we can forge some sort of uh, makeshift patchwork alliance out of these mm, disparating factious, factions. Well, let's see. I have been down south. I've talked to Sebastian. He has quite a few people there. Well organized. Uh, not well trained, but they don't seem to need a whole lot of things before they're ready to help us. Besides that, there's the Eastern, Eastern refugee camp. A lot of people. A lot of people. However, they have almost nothing. I spoke to Marco, and he needs supplies. If we could have good smithing works smuggled in here through the barricade, through the bar, sort of, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, quarantine. Blockade. Yeah. Then we could produce some, if nothing else, makeshift weapons and armor. He nods. I am sure uh, some of the loyalists would be happy to smuggle things in for us. They have done so before. Right, good. I shall go and tell the others then that there's a meeting tonight. So, his place. Indeed. Sounds good. And uh, good work. That is what Laurel will go to do. I I'll guess. Pick time, horror. I guess so, I better go home then. Bye, mother. And let me just double check something, because that's the answer. How long is that floating beacon going to be there? For as long as Bollard exists. For now I'll move down to Bollard's place. Um, and time your answer to your question is literally just the number of, the number of rounds equal to Oracle level. So. Is the number of time I can use it? Well, is that how long I can use? But that's how long you can use it in total, and you can turn it on and off as many times as you want. Though. Huh. Okay. The point, the point stands is, you know, once you've hit your round number of rounds per day, you've run out. Okay. Cool. So in your case, it's free right now. <laughs> Yay. Uh, so wait, where did Laurel go? Let's have a look. Laura just went to tell the others that, that they were, the meeting was tonight at Zoe's place. Or was it tomorrow night? Tonight, as I believe when he said. No, it was tonight. Sure. Players. Laura, where did he? There it is, Hogan. I completely lost him. Remember Rivalin. 
That's true, Rifflin is currently in the library researching. When does Rifflin want to come back? Uh, she'll come back, uh... Within three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> um, well... Not long after it, uh, became dark, she'll come. Uh, also, also make me an Arcana or a history check for plus six. Did you say Arcana or History? Yep. Okay. Thank you, and we can return back. Yay. So people start showing up at the bar. Uh, Raphael does see someone else show up at the bar as well. Yes. A pair of individuals which you might recognise. Mm, oh, you. Yeah, he will. He will quickly tell them that uh, it has been. Uh, you know, the, the the thing has been moved, um, and point them towards uh, towards Soa's house. Hmm. They, they they seem to dislike the location. The fact that you know it's very very close to the area. Of, yeah. Sound the rain controls. Well, we have a super hot escape route into the sewers. <laughs> They'll make their way there. <laughs> As Zoe, Zoe gets a knock on her door. She will open the door. She. You get will, he will walk with him, of course. She Very is well. expecting people to arrive. And Laurel is already here. And Riffle gathers as well. Oh, where are we going with? Go yep. Well, yes. Uh, to move yourself, but. He'll show up. Um, so you, so you told all the leaders, did you, Manukai? Yep, I think so. Very well. Also, also Ballard, and uh, to bring that describe. Very well. Um, the commander of the refugee camp does not show up. Viceroy Gunnery does, however. Hmm. Um, Bollard and the scribe and the bacon tray. Organizes correctly. There we go. Uh, the scribe is no longer fatigued. He spent the whole day resting. And then, like, look at all the people you've got. We need a table. A very very big table. I believe that's everyone who accepted. Well, well, Mother Elena didn't even want to hear about it. No, she did not. In that case, you know, so, so everyone eventually arrives. Riff is still very tired. What do you do? <laughs> you know, all, all of you are in some room of Zoe's, a dining hall, or you know, where, where would you put everyone? Uh, dining hall. There would be a big table. There were a lot of chairs, so everyone has a place to sit. Very well. You're all in one dining hall. This is probably going to be a huge table. Yes, it will. That is a that's a big table. <laughs> it's because the resolution of the map is so small. Laurel will be sitting there with all his. <laughs> why 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 do we dance to that table? Well, oh no! You, you did dance on it. It's all twisted. <laughs> yes, it's, it's it's all from you dancing on it. Remember? It's, it's, that's not a table. It's a rhombus. <laughs> Pedro is at an angle. That's not like I can do. <laughs> Laurel will, will sit here. And he'll sort of have his arms spread out slightly. Bashman will go there. Yeah. Uh, around him. Voila. A little bit of food on the table. The bacon there. tray. Oh, food? Not that much. Fine. All for Bollard then. Uh, Laurel has a feeling that someone here is going to betray him. <laughs> Raphael, Raphael set, us in, set us in on the chandelier. <laughs> You're on the chandelier? 
Yeah, have my have my pillow up there. Very well, you're up above. Um, <laughs> no, I'm sitting next to Laurel. Hi. Go there. Oh, Catherine. You're such a handsome, delightful flower. <laughs> we need so here's more the meeting. We need more people. We need one there, there, and there. As everyone sort of settles in, sits down. I just imagine people sort of looking at each other, at who who arrived at their senses. It seems that this was everyone who arrived here at the first, the first meeting, I suppose. She looks around. It is a really, indeed, grim news, but it is good that so many have come, so many are willing to help, even if it is mostly to help uh, ourselves, I imagine. It's good, I suppose, then, that so many of us understand that we are a community, and what hurts one of us hurts us all. We need each other. We're all gathered here today to find out what to do about this attack, the cleansing of Northside. How to stop it, or if we can't, how to defend the best we can against it, so that the least possible people will perish. I think we agree that um, we should try to keep casualties to a minimum. We are actually doing this to try to protect, protect people of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the district, as well as ourselves. Um, I, for one, would not condone something like terror tactics, burning buildings and whatnot, in motions of hand. Apart from that, I have already well, suggested something to the loyalists in motions towards uh, Iris and, uh, yeah, and says that we are fighting a force that is generally uh, larger than, than our forces, and uh, when you are fighting someone with a larger force than yourself, well, tactics are needed. Um, we simply cannot do a frontal assault, as I see it. No, what we need to do is try to misdirect and to avoid the direct confrontation, slip around, uh, be very difficult to actually grasp. Uh, I would suggest a, um, a, a strategy or approach more of, um, well, not fighting, so to speak. Guerrilla tactics. He shrugs. We have a decent idea of where exactly the mayor is gonna is gonna put in his forces. Mule by crossing seems to be a potential hotbed of activity, and that is well, in our backyard, so to speak. Looks around. I have tried to reach uh, some of my friends within the guard, but have not been able to do so. Uh, troubling. I think a, a sort of inventory of force uh, is fairly good. He looks over to Laurel. Uh, how well trained would you say that any f people we have is? He looks to Sebastian and to, uh, to Gunry. Well, from what you can find, um, Sebastian's people are, um, they're not well trained, they know how to use a weapon. You know, you, they're not really well trained, but they definitely have a, um, a strong position and a lot, and a lot of goods. Um, gunnery, however, the Eastern camp, they're not, they're not trained, you know, not many of them know how to use weapons, they barely have anything on their side. They've got the manpower. That's it. Sheer force. Got the bodies. This really is going to be a Thermopylae thing, isn't it? <laughs> Mop rule? Yeah, that's going to be great. Well, we work great. for the Persians. We just need, like, mob tribunals as well. <laughs> it sure did. Three million peasants <laughs> descend upon you. 
Do enough attack rolls, and eventually you're going to hit the enemy. Our arrows lock out the sun. You are foolish, Leonidas. Um, oh, yeah. Kind God. I am a gracious and generous God. Uh, yeah. So basically, we have supplies. We have people. We just need to, you know, combine them. <laughs> maybe some training. Maybe some captains from the. Uh... Does does the does Laurel look to 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 Catherine and and to to Iris because he doesn't really know any other two. Uh, Raphael, well, you know, oh, I forgot to introduce them, and we'll quickly do so. What sort of manpower do they do you have? Well, trained people. Um, Catherine will inform you that uh, what she has is, while not de- while not being trained in the traditional sense, she has a lot of people that are um, qu- quite strong and decently good at combat. You know, they could they. You know, they they could def- they can defend themselves quite well. Uh, she doesn't have many, but she does. She, you know, she, she has maybe a squad or two of well-trained people. Iris, um, she informs you that um, the Lawless they have they have quite a large stockpile of food and weaponry. They have a they have a lot of people situated. Um, a lot of them are civilians, but they also have a, you know, they have a decent chunk of people which have been, you know, somewhat trained, you know, or, or able in some way to either defend themselves or be able to, you know, be in some kind of actual force. Every, you know, well, one of the things for the lawyers, it seems, is everyone to be able to use some kind of weapon in case of emergencies. Oh. Right. Even they, if, they basically are a faction in by themselves, while the rest of us are kind of just... Yeah, yeah, they are, they are an established faction. The rest of you are just bits and pieces. Well, we have one too now. We have, we have some some a militia force and and just a lot of peasants, like a lot of bodies. That is certainly true. You know, we're an equal footing here, really. <laughs> we but should Lord, take command of your forces. Yeah, auxiliary. Yeah. She so would be too happy if you want to take control of her forces. Laura will, will report uh, also that Margot and Margot's workshop, if given the materials, is willing to create anything we need. Yeah, well, at this point, you know, I feel I'll point out that it seems that we have a, a working of a decent fighting force here. We just need to sort of combine, perhaps to spread a few uh, people out between the, like, the, because they have a lot of bodies, but they're untrained, right? So with uh, the loyalists putting in some work uh, like and and like Scarnetti's gang running like s- spy operations and stuff like that she's probably pretty good at that sneaking around spying on the on the mayor because we kind of need to know what he's doing like go for uh, go go for what his troops are doing and uh, Rafael will point out that he's pretty sure that many of the local guards have probably you know it's probably it's somewhat deep in in Catherine's pocket and she could probably call in a few favors to uh, to get some intel on what the mayor is actually doing. Uh, with that, you know, if we have a decent understanding of troop movements and start training some of our own to put up like barricades and stuff. You know, they they don't they don't expect us to put up a resistance probably. So when they find like barricades with people like armed with bows and stuff on them, you know, a city guard would not easily just rush such a thing. Um, it would take a, a considerable force to breach even a small like barricade because you know fighting from behind cover. It's very easy to fight on the defensive. Well, you know, it's you need like twice or three times the number to actually breach through something. You some of them seem to discuss between themselves. <clears throat> You're considering the considering the idea. Some people. Some people seeming less happy with it than others. I mean, the ultimate prize would, of course, be to some someone get access to the military storehouse. 
like a raid in that place. That would be like the, the a real like <laughs> a real hammer blow to to the guy. Mm -hmm. um, like burning it down or taking if we can't take possession of it, like burn it down so like you lose arms and armor. Looting it would be good, certainly. Looting would be super good. I don't know if we can do that, but we can certainly try. Although I imagine it to be you know, quite heavily defended, honestly. Probably the most defended place in all of in all of the district. Except for maybe the hall. Yeah. But he is kind of contained at the moment and trying to contain him, like, you know. Not poke at it. Yeah. I mean, we we as a group can certainly, you know, we can hold our own. We can we can probably act as a as a strike like elite task force here, taking on the harder stuff. But we kind of, you know, we need to know that when we are gone, like the defenses are not just going to crumble while we're out doing what we need to be doing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, train, training up the bodies, <laughs> the bodies of the camps, putting up barricades, and like, yeah. Iris looks looks to, towards Raphael. Raphael as, looks towards Iris. As long as you're not, as long as you don't have a problem with, how did you put it? To use the quotation marks, terrorists training us. Raphael shrugs. I uh, I, I I don't think that uh, that the training itself is terrorist. But I am what I'm pointing out is terrorist is the perhaps political indoctrination. But I don't think you would uh, derail training to indoctrinate the uh, the populace. He smiles. I'm sure that can come by itself. If I I have no doubt that you and your faction will proclaim quite loudly that it is you, and that it is you that are helping these people, and that it by itself would give it enough. Goodwill, I think, to sway a lot of them to your, uh, to your side. Well, that's that's how we've already managed to get so many people on our side as it is, Re it refugees is. who we've taken in. Well, there you go. For you, this is a golden opportunity, and sad to say, I do believe we need your help. <laughs> she seems to like that. <laughs> Frankly, I don't think you can afford not to help us. In that case. My, my offer of being able to smuggle things in still stands. We have many people who cannot fight, so therefore doing supply runs is far more a better option for them. And for those, and for those who can fight, and for those who need to be able to fight, we can, cer we can certainly do some training, though we have quite a short time band to do so. Indeed. He has to make sure that they don't cut off their own feet when swinging a sword. Arm the refugees and, and do so through Marco. Besides, I was looking at the Western refugee camp. I thought maybe there were still stragglers left there. It was a disturbing sight, to tell the least. Does anyone know what's going on in that area? Captain looks toward towards you. As of late, I haven't sent many of my people down there. There has there's certainly been some interesting developments. It seems like many people who have survived in that area, they have, um, many of them may have gone a little bit over the edge. And insanity brewed more insanity, it seems. Many of them there seem to be quite unstable, as far as I can tell. I have no, I have no real details on them, however. Approaching did not seem the seem like the best option. They're contained. They're, they've self-contained themselves for now. That seems uh, disturbing. Uh, do we know anything? What is going on in there? I I do not know anything of what's exactly been going on in there. As far as I can tell, people have just people have just broke under the pressure of, well, everything. I see.
Um, yeah, I think I think that would be the basic plan, I guess. Anyone have anything else? Well, I'll look to uh, Zoe. Did you speak to Mother Eleanor? Um, Zoe so looks down the table. I did, but she does not want anything to do with this. Uh, is she refusing to help us if we have wounded? She didn't say that. She just don't want to be part of the fighting. She That's... wants she wants to stay in the hospital and help those in need. But if if she doesn't want to help the wounded, I can and please do that. And Sister Alana also pipes up that she can also, of course, use some of the, her powers to try and mitigate the sick. Yeah, you know, as long as we have actually access to the hospital itself, we don't need Alana on the front lines. We need her in the back, patching up people if needed. Mm -hmm. I think what, what we would gain from that would basically be exclusivity to the hospital. Hmm. It's still going to be basically in our territory. I don't think uh, I don't think the mayor would risk sending any troops there. I don't know it's a well protected place. It is. Maybe even so, she can hold her own. A bit. I don't think she would be easily bullied or dominated by by anyone, honestly. No. She seems rather headstrong. But yeah, that would be the basic plan. Arm the uh, arm the people from the camp. Um, get supplies running. Start. Training what little we have, set up some barricades, and maybe use uh, Scarnetti's people to do some spying rounds and calling in some favors. See if we can get some more details on whatever plan the mayor is planning to do. Sure. Where will he strike first? Exactly. Well, and then for this, then um, basically what basically what you, I want you to do then is for each of the groups you have available to you, which currently stands as. Well, it currently stands at three groups. Well, four, actually, because it's Bastion, so... What do you want them to do? Assign, well, each, assign each of them a task in some way. Sure. Could you, could you write up which four we have? Yep. I think someone needs to uh, train the refugees in some form. Hmm. Scarnetti's people, maybe? No, I don't think or they're Sebastian's, really. If they know anything. Uh, no, I, I think Iris and the loyalists are probably the best at training. Those are the four groups you currently have access yeah, to. Yeah, but we need her to smuggle stuff. Yeah, we need. Um, smuggling can be done as a bonus action for the loyalists. Okay. Well, they get on that. On of, they can do that on top of any other actions. Because we need weaponry and. and... Guns. <laughs> yes, guns. Guns may be a little bit difficult to smuggle through. Everyone gets gets a pistol. With one bullet. <laughs> one one man carries the rifle. One man carries the ammo. Mm -hmm. Rafael now gets the RPG. Yes, of course. Um. So now, loyalists smuggle and train. Refugees are on training. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're Muster training. Muster and train. Muster and train, exactly. Sebastian's, what's his speciality? The thing is, he, he's basically already, he's what we, like, he's our standing force, right? He's like, they've cleared the area from walkers, they have supplies, they have a fortified location. They have a they have a head that like a figure that they're willing to follow. 
Oh god, is he the next mayor? So, maybe, I don't know. Maybe put him on building barricades and start, you know, keeping an eye out. So make that our headquarters? We could, I suppose. Certainly has a nice sort of position, vintage. I, I think I, th I think we should kind of thing. I mean, I think we should. Uh, our group should probably hover around Mulebach Crossing, honestly, and keep keep the uh, the mayor try from to keep the front here. Yeah, try to keep this area from uh, from the mayor, so he doesn't just seize that up because the the church is over here. We can't really lose that. Uh, that'll be bad. Mm -hmm. um, but if Sebastian is actually, I mean, dug in over here, he can probably hold his own and start like. You know, expanding his area, uh, as I said, building barricades and doing patrols, and, and you know, again barricading this road here. Oh. Yeah, exactly. They can certainly begin spreading the aura of influence over time. Yep, expanding. Um, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, uh, then if they need it, of course, they can draw upon the the recruits from the uh, refugee camp. Yeah, I think having intrigued. them under, I think sending them under to under Sebastian's. So he, he's he'll be Southern Command, right? Mm. Uh, because uh, one of the actions you can definitely give Sebastian, for example, though, is expand, basically, just try and increase the area he controls. Well, we just, I mean, we, right. that wouldn't really give us more people or more power. What we want is is more defensibility. Yeah. Build up defenses. They fortify. We want the southern part of the city to basically. Hours, because these guys need time to. We want to control this road because this is where major, you know, if if the mayor has any major troops, he's going to be trying to moving on the roads. And if we can control the roads, then we, you know, basically cut them off from from the logistics. The road mostly. Yeah. Like the houses on the sides and such. Mm -hmm. So we've got Sebast Sebastian's group four or five. The refugees on training. The loyalists. Um, well, they can smuggle. Well, they are very organized and such. Because they can do smuggling on top of you know any of our actions. Right. They have enough power to have two actions per round. First. You could set them to like send them to harass or yeah certainly could basically win us time right before the mayor yeah trying does. trying to stall them basically could um I'm thinking the Scarnettis should do um intelligence runs. Trying to uh, g gather as much as possible from what the mayor is actually doing. I mean, as I said, sure. and bribery, lot, perhaps even. yeah, a, a lot of a lot of the guards have probably been to her fighting rings and Practice stuff. their corruption. Yeah, exactly. Use that corruption to work for us, and find out what the hell they're doing, so we can actually know. And uh, yeah, you got fortified train something and smuggle, gather information. Yep. Yeah, can is there? Do we have like action? We can, like basically you want them to, to do hit and run tactics, right? Like go there, burn down a barricade, kill kill some guards, disappear. Very well. Uh, you can kind of think of it how you, uh, the way of the wicked, how the organizations kind of worked for that. Mm -hmm. Get an idea. But uh, most most certainly they can they can try um, doing like supply raid kind of ideas. We can yeah so, yeah, 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 yeah raiding supplies that's a good idea. Yeah, disruption tactics. Yeah. Make life as difficult for them as possible. Yep, they try to gather in one area. Well, the water has suddenly you know, turned bad. Or, oh, they gathered all of this fantastic food. Well, now it's filled with termites. I mean, something. <laughs> Does that, that look about right? Sure. Sure. Um, also, uh, for this, you're going to be... Uh, the refugees state that they're going to need, um, you know, they're going to they're need some funds if they want to, if they want stuff smuggled through. Because, uh -huh. you know, it, it does cost money to bring materials through. Um, how much you want to give is your choice. Um, you know, they're asking about 500 gold pieces worth. I think if we 
went into the uh, pot, we could afford that quite easily. Well, I think we split the the pile, right? Or do we have things in the pile? Currently, we have a hundred gold in the pot. Oh, okay, I thought we had a bit more, but uh, like you know, it would be it would be good if we funded most of it. So we not all of a little more, yeah. So not we all of it comes from the loyalists have, because we have four hundred and seventy-four. A hundred in money. Was it four hundred seventy-four? Yeah. And a hundred in money. No, that's with it. Okay, four hundred seventy-four. Sure. Yeah, I mean, that's what twenty-six gold pieces short of five hundred. So, question: If you want to just give them that, or we're going to give them more? True. I mean, I know I'm saving up for my headband. But, I mean, that's a while away. Uh, I am also saving them for the stuff I want to buy, of course. But uh, I, I think 500 is a start. And then they will, they can certainly request more. But we would kind of need to know exactly what they need it for. Yeah. It's like, oh, yes, we. Uh, I want to have a golden helmet. It's like, what? <laughs> no. Yeah. Freaking idiot. Totally agree. Sure. I'll empty our pot then. Who wants to give out the rest? Laura can certainly do it if need be. Um, it's only like what did we need? Twenty six. Twenty six. Yeah. So ah, I'll uh, I'll throw. Oh, okay. Off. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we're I would, but pa paying it, uh, paying it all in copper, of course. <laughs> Still. Yep. Might actually be the most useful coin to whitewash. Sort of. True. Probably, yeah. Cares about copper, right? You can just spend it here and there all the time. Yeah. So we give them the resources needed out of our own pockets. <laughs> yes. As I said, probably good that we pay for it uh, so the loyalists don't get too many hooks into them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, refugees, a vast number of refugees that are training could be very valuable if we put them in. Should, our should, we, should we give our. Should we give our group some official name or something so they know who is the benefactors? Oh, yeah, we should. The Third Street. <laughs> the Muleback Saints. <laughs> Muleback Saints. Contentious <laughs> <laughs> uh, for Laurel. No, uh, he's, he's the real Laurel Saint. Uh, Richard really Muleback Saints. No, it's the first day. We'll we'll we'll, we'll get one. Yeah, we'll, we'll get, get one. one we, we'll we'll get like a, a flag and everything. Yeah. Sebastian is second in command. <laughs> sure. What? What? I, I, I Iris I Iris seems upset by that. Well, she has her own thing, right? We will uh, we will gather weekly for council meetings like this and talk over things. It is an alliance. The uh, our group is the is the the leading the leading force in the alliance. We're neutral, and so we put you know we pull everyone together here. Mm -hmm. So we're sort of the the leaders, I suppose, like the chairman, <laughs> chairman of the alliance. Um, and the others are members of the war council, basically. How does how does Raphael uh, feel about this? Uh, what specifically? Leading a war council of of downtrodden people against tyrants when you just slay them. <laughs> you know, there's there's certainly a romantic vibe to all of this, uh, and he does fancy himself a, a fairly a good guy and, and somewhat of a hero type. So yeah, he's definitely for it. He's not really used to fighting a war, but if it is against tyranny, he he can surely you know cut some fools up. Definitely. Elward suggested the Copper Union. <laughs> um, so what, what was the total amount you decided to smuggle through? Did you smuggle all 500 gold pieces? or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we, we pay for 500 gold pieces. We, you know, we just call it the Alliance for now. On. For, for now. The Rebellion. 
The Freedom Army. What? People's Army. No, oh, wait a minute. We'll be high chairman. <laughs> high chairman. Mao. I mean Laurel. Laurel. F freely elected. Yes. <laughs> Democratic Republic of Yulba Crossing. <laughs> Um, communes of Northside. Mm -hmm. People's Republic of. Yeah, that's when that's when the blue clocks arrive. <laughs> you know, sheep. We can't call ourselves a horde. That, that sounds. The bad. horde. <laughs> yeah, the horde. That sounds pretty bad. The mob. Uh, also, also. Did someone mention me? Who? What? What is that? No. Oh, the Queen's Guards. He's Hello, you want to help us? Yeah, okay, sure. He's one of yes. those guys. He'll just walk right oh, in. Sure. You killed the Lord Mayor. Why are you guys so sure? <laughs> Stab. Boom. <laughs> um. <laughs> Lord Mayor just disappears at that. We're called Freedom Force. That's not copyright or anything. Nope. <laughs> Try Bacon Epor Eporium? <laughs> yeah, is that does that all look okay for this week's you warriors? Know? Yeah, royal warriors of the empress that is currently ruling. <laughs> That's a bit long. I mean, yeah, let, let, we'll, we'll make it. it. North side fried bacon. <laughs> That's like a sports team. <laughs> Yeah, Mule, the mule back like sharks. Sharks, yeah. Actually, this was once around. like a stadium where the inn is now located, and it was actually the the mule bags that were oh. there. Yeah. Uh, but now it just became mule bag crossing. So. Mm. You guys can think of a name between sessions. Sure. It's the it's the alliance for now. Or something. Very well with that. Everyone will go ahead and return back to their places and um. Woo -woo 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 -woo. You know, oh, but I just gave him a fork. Bard can stay. Yeah, that the knife's meant to be on the other side. The forks. The oh. fork and knife are meant to be switched. Oh well. You want no. Me to switch? What, what, are you, what are you doing? Them? No, you don't. No, that's left-handed. Left-handed people that, eat like that. This is how you eat. That, no, that is left-handed. Do no, not. What do are you this. doing? There we go. That's what? fine. That's fine. No, that's fine. That's fine. What's wrong with left-handed? That's how it's. No. How how is that? Hold on, it's left-handed. I'm gonna smack you in the face. Oh, oh, let's look at God. how he's holding his hammer. Exactly. Maybe he's um... just holding his hammer. God damn it. <laughs> Bugs me. Bugs me, man. <laughs> Well, the direction would be controlled by the left hand, while the actual main weight would be held by the right. In which case, it'd be right. So handed. I take it we don't have a meeting the next day. No. Um, the, the, the way this the way this should go is basically the whole you know basically the once per week system, unless something important comes up. It's only between actions. Yeah. You know, then today, uh, Laurel is going to smuggle out his family. You're going and to smuggle the family of Margot. Ooh, how are you going to smuggle them? Where? Well, they'll take a walk to Zoe's house, dump, go down into the sewers, go to the place sort of over there, there's our little safe spot, and then he's going to go visit the, uh, the steakhouse inn, the seasoned steak inn. Oh, the seasoned steak inn. Yes, and, and he's going he's gonna to get uh, two family rooms there. Can you roll me a survival check as you go through the sewers? Sure. And now, finally, we can turn Laura's shop into the uh, biological warfare factor it was meant to be. It's what everybody has been dreaming of since we knew mm -hmm. that it was an alchemy shop. There you go. It's time to pump out VX gas over this damn place. <laughs> okay, you, you safe to get everyone through. Right. I'll put them there. How much for uh, for a few rooms for... Well, I mean, he did pay the, the 30 gold. So if it's less than like a silver, then it doesn't matter. You, 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 you know, you know, between between the families and between your money, you know, you can handle. All right. So they can they can stay there and be safe. It does seem like a nice place, right? 
The season steak in seems very nice. It's also, the smell when you come in, it's actually a very, very delicious smell. Good. Makes your mouth water. Lowell's no, disappointed try, he couldn't be here try to be, try to be happy with his family, you know. Try, ho hope that they enjoy their, their stay here. They enjoy their vacation. <laughs> Just tell them that, you know, no matter what they hear, it'll be okay. And, uh, uh, we'd be doing that as well. Um, Samuel Margot is now available to help will them. will also be giving his mother a hundred gold pieces. Woo! To take care of take care of herself. Is that what the mother says? Woo! It's time to free the party. Yeah, that that should that should last them for four months. Of yeah, that will last them. Average living. Um, so you know they don't have to spend it all, but now they have, so that if something happens to Laurel, that they will be able to right. at least find some sort of accommodations. No, that will work. Okay, do you have Samuel Margot on your team? Uh -huh. We got his family, and he don't know where they are. <laughs> could you, could you, <laughs> you work for us now. I suppose uh, we never get out of that room. Exactly. Oh well. <laughs> can can Rith uh, talk to her old as fuck neighbor? Maybe the old witch can like conjure up storms <laughs> and stuff for us. You wish it to snow again? <laughs> Very well. Bring me the blood of five innocents, <laughs> and I will read my blood magic. <laughs> yeah, say, is it okay to kill five innocents to save a hundred? <laughs> of course it is. Oh. <laughs> yes, uh, bring them to me. And bring the this. five least liked people from the refugee camp. <laughs> That'd be like a horrible tire side to, to, to way to turn. I got a custom plate with fork and knife and your dedication to Bollard's meal is uh, is impeccable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I Riff... don't know what that means, but okay. Riff will go to Madame Scarlet's house and inform her of what is happening, but Madame Scarlet is not there. <gasps> well <gasps> shit. She's a better soothe than you and she left. Yeah, she's like, I'm fucking out of here. She knew well, she was out. She... Like I should go, 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 leave. Great goodness! I'm hopping off of my broom and flying Strange. away. <laughs> Strangely enough, you look through the windows. Also, her house is completely frozen over. What? what? Frozen what? over? Frozen Inside, over? In the interior is completely what? frozen. Okay, that is weird. Stop. Um, all right. We... All right. All right. Riff will um. Uh, that is suspicious as hell. A way to Super get in. suspicious. Yeah, Riff will try to find a way in. Alone? Uh, like, well, <laughs> uh, she will send Nairu to get uh, Raphael's attention while looking for a way in. So she's, Nairu's basically pecking at his face like, dude, get the fuck up. Uh, Raphael understands and tell, tells him to get Laurel if he's home. And if he is uh, home, get his attention to Ruth and then go and get Zoe. Uh, suppose today Laurel wouldn't be home. <gasps> <laughs> dun, yeah, dun, over down dun. season six. He it all frozen. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, you yeah. look into Zoe's house and Loyal. Hello, <laughs> Loyal. Uh, Bollard Loyal is all frozen. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. But I did give him a nice chair, so. Yes, yeah, so I. No, what I am I doing with my life? I know. What are you doing? Look at this shit. <laughs> I am proud of you, Tyne. I'm proud uh, of you. And Catherine Scardetti is still there, glaring at Bollard <laughs> over the table, being like, Did I not hide her token? <laughs> no, you did. <laughs> I completely forgot to hide it. No, leave it. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Yeah. That was actually Bollard's first wife. It's uh, kind of weird. <laughs> don't, 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 don't tell everyone, it's a secret. <laughs> well, so we seeing. Um... Nairu knows right, well, that every time he's arrived, it's because there's something they wrong, so she will follow him. As long as she stays within 30. <laughs> <laughs> Nairu, where did you go? Mm. Cool. He's like a piece of yarn or something attached to Zoe. Just yeah. a bit of string. He keeps on tugging every now and again. <laughs> Come on. Alright, Raphael walks up to Riff and says, what is the problem? Nairu is uh, beside himself. Well, my next door neighbor, she's uh, 
kind of different and definitely strange. Um, and I went to tell her about what is happening and, well, look for yourself. And she gestures in uh, where she saw the frozen scene. scene Raphael frozen. looks in. Do you want to build a snowman, Frowns. Raphael? You, 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 you see a dining room completely frozen in ice. That doesn't seem to be quite notable. Uh, so he looks to Raphael. Can you hold on to me for a sec? <laughs> Raphael like... smiles gallantly. Of course. Oh my. Uh, she will detect undead, detect magic, and yeah, that's it. You, you, know throw, all the, you throw all the nine miles out. Yeah, I will throw detect magic as well. Well, what right. if you scream and run? We have to hunt you down. True. That's why Raphael is holding on to her while he, she's doing this. Uh, you right. detect magic okay. and... Make me no. <laughs> Inside, you do sense definitely an aura of magic. Can you make me a spellcraft check? Of course I can. Yes, In sure. which case, can Riff, uh, am I able to use identify? Boom. You cannot use identify. Ah, All of the spellcraft. Ah, they shit. Zoe oh. senses a evocation cold aura. Wow. Oh. <laughs> How weird! That is... How odd. Evil. <laughs> no. Um, well, she'll, after she's done, she'll uh, look at uh, Raphael and say, It's okay. Nothing happened. Just to be sure. Actually, also, um, at, um, you, you also can kind of get a power level for the aura, as in, uh, it's been cast within the last hour. Huh. Well, she'll look at Rivalin and... I, I bet Raphael is not going to get any of this. So she looked at and Something evil has been cast in there. Some, what did you say, frost aura? Evocation. Yeah. Oh. Evocation. The same school as fireballs and stuff. Yeah. Mm. And it, has, it was cast an hour ago. Uh, Riff nods and says, well, it could be possible that there's something in here that tells us what's going on. So maybe we should go in there. Raphael. As she turns to Raphael and says, Could you possibly uh, find us a way in by any chance? Raphael looks at the window and breaks the window. The window is frozen nice, but you still get through it. So he goes, You're entering a property by breaking a window. That's illegal. It is true. I am breaker, breaking and entering, he smiles. I am also plotting to overthrow the local government. So I think we can overlook this small uh, infraction, yes? Uh, she, 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 she nods, fine, sure. <laughs> he, uh, he draws his blade and quickly hops She's... into through the window. She still looks around, like, expecting someone to come and scroll her. <laughs> <laughs> halt! You're breaking the law! <laughs> then pay oh, with your damn. blood! Exactly. God damn it! <laughs> Uh, 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 Riff will follow Raphael. So I will follow and kind of hold on to Riff being very nervous about this. <laughs> you step inside the icy room. Dun, I dun, need dun, to dun, be dun, uh, right back because I just knocked over my water bottle over all of the floor. Congrats. Oh, good. <laughs> That's right, I knocked coffee over uh, my keyboard the other day. Oh. Uh, luckily, I only got the number pad part, so it's all good. It's all good. I once dropped a glass of red wine in my mother's laptop. Oh. Oh, wow. But I might want to add, uh, I was up early. I was on my way to school, and my parents had been drinking the day before, so there was wine glasses all over the table. Uh, and I had a duvet, duvet around me, so I walked past, and then the duvet pushed the glass over. And I really did try my best to save that laptop, but <laughs> wine is... Well, the good thing was the screen broke and she didn't want it anymore, so I took it and I connected a screen to it. Ah. Bam. My laptop. <laughs>